coffee thinking about olden days I remember when I was 18 years old I wanted to be cool what 18 year old doesn't want to be cool actually I think as we get older we still want to be cool it just gets a little more sophisticated as to how we go about it <laughs> but I remember when I was 18 years old I lived in upstate New York and um the drinking age in upstate New York uh, in the 70s, it was, uh, it was 18. I think it's 21 now, but at that time it was 18. Really, it was, it was too young. And if there's any young people out there listening to this grandma lady, uh, you know, I have to say it, it's, it's too young. So um, anyways, uh, I, I remember sitting uh, on a bar room for the, in a bar room for the first time trying to be cool. I had my uh, blue work shirt on and my uh, blue jeans that were worn out. I think we ran them over with a car a few times just to make them look raggedy and, and, and worn. And um, I had a jacket on that was corduroy. And the jacket had those patches on the sleeve. That's when they were real popular. And so that was really cool. And then I remember sitting there uh, on this barroom stool that I could barely get up onto because I was so small. I looked like a little kid. And I had I, I decided I was going to be real cool and smoke a cigarette because you could get cigarettes at 18 years old too. And so I had a cigarette that I wasn't inhaling. I, I just was looking cool. And... Uh, I lit that cigarette and I sat there and I ordered a beer um, and uh, I didn't like beer. I just wanted, you know, I figured I'm bar room supposed to have a beer. I could have ordered a Coke. Nobody would know the difference, but I ordered a beer even though I didn't like the taste of it. And I sat there with my cigarette that I would choke to death if I really smoked it. And I, uh, I um, had patchouli oil on because uh, I thought everybody liked the smell of that, but if you were an asthmatic, it would send you to the hospital. Anyways, it was it was tough time to be cool, but I remember sitting there with my lit cigarette that I really wasn't smoking and drinking my drink that I really wasn't drinking, being so cool. And I didn't realize it, but the cigarette was burning down, and the head of that cigarette fell off and went down into the sleeve of my corduroy jacket with the patches. And I, and I didn't realize it, and I was talking to somebody next to me. And all of a sudden, he started looking at me really funny, and he said, Did you know your sleeve was on fire? And I looked over, and there was smoke billowing out of my cool jacket from my cool cigarette. And so I very coolly picked up my cool drink and poured it down and hoped that nobody noticed that I wasn't so cool. <laughs> Okay, so I bored you with that story. <laughs> to tell you this, I'm going to show you something today that really truly is cool. And it's called a power chord. And we went over the E, uh, A, and B power chords a while back. But I thought I'd show you the G, C, and D power chords. Because uh, you know G, C, D, they go together. You can play just about anything from G. So it's a good idea to learn them in power chords because you can very easily change key if you need to without the use of a capo, even though capos work great too. Um, but uh, so let's just get right into it. I now, I'm not going to go into the theory, the, the one and the five, how it takes two, the one and the five to make a power chord. And we don't need to go into that. I'm just going to look at the formations, patterns, um, and in doing so, uh, hopefully you'll remember it and remember that it's a G and a C and a D and, uh, and, and be able to apply it right away without all the extra information. Now, it's not that you shouldn't learn the extra information. And perhaps somewhere down the road, we'll go over, you know, what does it mean when somebody says one, four, five? We're going to play in one, four, five. Um, you probably already know this, or maybe you don't, but we're not going to go into that today, okay? So... What we're gonna do is first start with the G power chord, okay? So just take your little pointer finger 
and we're going to find the root note G, which is the third third fret down on your E string, your low string. There it is. That's a G, right? Because E, F, G. And then you're going to take your middle finger, go the fifth fret down, the second string over. So now you got that. And then you're going to take your ring finger, put it right next to it, third string down. You're on the fifth fret. Okay, do you see that? I'm showing it to you from different angles so you can see how it's placed. You notice my thumb, you can't see it. It's not up here. If it was, I'd be having troubles. It's behind, okay? Now, your thumb is something that should be moving as you play. Don't ever feel like you anchor it and never move it because you do move it, okay? So in this case, I, I have it directly behind. It makes it a lot easier to do these, these chords, okay? So here we go. Now, you're only going to play those bottom three strings. I played them all, it doesn't sound right. And I, I lift up a lot of times because I'm breaking it. it. It has a nice sound. Oh, you could do that too. Just leave them. But that's a G chord. Here. Okay, so you got your G chord. Now we're going to move on to the C. Take your pointer finger, stay on that third fret, but move over one string. Take your middle finger, stay on that fifth fret, but move over one string or the third string down. And you have that same formation. Your, your ring finger is right next to it. Now on the fourth fret down, or fourth string over. See that? Same formation as here, right? There's your G. You're just moving over everything. See, just moving it over one string, staying in the same shape. Okay, so now we've got the G. You can only play those three strings because if you played them all, it actually is kind of a pretty chord, but it's not, it's not the C chord you're looking for. Only play those three strings, okay? So now we got... We're going to go to the D. Right there, the D. Here we go, the D. You're just going to take this formation that for your C and just slide up two frets. See that? It's the same formation. And the thumb is still behind. See that? Okay, so now we've got it. We've got G, C, C, D, C. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Louie, Louie. There's so many songs that C, uh, a G, C, and D play. I mean, it's endless, uh, the tunes that have been written around those three chords. And sometimes they'll throw in an E minor, right? Country Road does that. Country Road. Throw in that E minor. But you can play it with those chords. There's a C. I'm not sure when I get a copyright ding, so I'm, I'm being real careful here. Okay, so uh, you got it. Those are the three power chords I was going to show you today. But I want to show you just a little twist. Hopefully I can do this quickly. So I don't bore you to death. But if you just stay with me just a few more minutes, this will give you even more of a spice to playing those power chords. Okay, so we've got our G, right? So where your middle finger is, I want you to switch that middle finger. I want you to switch fingers, take your pointer and put it where that middle finger was. So now you've got this. See that? And... Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm using my middle finger as the reference. I'm playing along, and I want to play some notes. So I switch. And now what I'm going to do is just play that note. Use my ring finger to play two frets down. 
move over a string, and then two frets down again. So listen. Now you do the same thing for the C. Where your middle finger is, use it as a reference, switch it. And then for the D, where your middle finger is, use it as the reference, put your pointer. So let's try it. So I hope uh, that helps a little bit, gives you something to play around with. And uh, I'll try to put a couple little chord charts in there to maybe help those that are much more visual um, that might help them find their way in this. Uh, but I thank you for listening again today. And I hope you have a, a wonderful day wherever you are, as we always say in this world. Now go finish that coffee. Have a great day.